You probably remember my review about the app uh, Radioactivity Counter for the smartphone, which simply uses the camera, which is covered light tight, and then only sees uh, photons of higher energy radiation, that is ionizing radiation such as gamma radiation. And uh, we came to the con conclusion that this only allows to see if there is, uh, well, strongly elevated levels of background radiation or more or less normal radiation levels. But it's just an estimate and it's not very accurate in telling you the real readings. So, today we're actually looking at a different app. And that will be for these little things. Pocket Geiger by radiation-watch.org I was sent two versions. One is for the iPhone. It's a very tiny little detector, a semiconductor detector which is just located right behind this window which simply attaches to the headphone jack of your smartphone. I also have the Android version. For the Android version you currently also need a battery supply which uses just a 9 volts battery. Um, but the entire pack is about as heavy as the 9 volts battery so you could imagine you strap these things together once you put the battery in there and it's still a very small detector even for the Android version. I currently don't have an iPhone, so um, I'll have to test and compare the iPhone version to the Android version later. For now, I'm just showing you the Android version. So, for the Android version, you pretty much just have to download the app, which is called Pocket Geiger. It is currently in development for the Android, so you oddly have to enable GPS, even though uh, you're not currently using GPS for this app, because it's, well, under development, as I said. But um, it is supposed to allow you to uh, record the readings that you were getting on a, on a certain route. So some uh, GPS logging feature which you then can see on the map. Um, it's supposed to be working already for the iPhone version but as I said I cannot currently test this so we're just gonna go with this one. Uh, first of all you have to enter the settings and uh, there will be a table of settings for your specific smartphone which you set here like the threshold for radiation and noise and if you need to reverse the input. I was actually getting weird readings even though I'm not supposed uh, to reverse the input as uh, off the table they had there but uh, apparently I have a different version of uh, the Samsung Galaxy S3 uh, so I actually needed to uh, attach reverse input in order to get a reading so if you're getting similar problems might just as well try and reverse the input on whatever phone you're using if you set the other uh, settings accordingly. So now that we're done with the setup, we simply put in the battery and attach the counter. Alright, so trying to enable this. Says couldn't get location. Possible GPS is off. Yes, that's the case. So we need to oddly enable GPS, which is not as nice because it's not useful, especially if you're inside and it drains the battery. But well, it's under development, so I hope that changes. So let's just turn on counter now. You can also see input wave where you can actually see little counts if any. Now um, such a small semiconductor detector which you probably saw from the other semiconductors I was testing is not very sensitive to. In order to get an accurate reading on uh, normal background radiation levels you would have to have it running for like 10 minutes or something like that. So um, let's actually put a source on this. I'm just going to use cesium-137 and you can see there's much more of these little pulses here. It's very hard to see with the camera actually but you can see there are some little flashes. Uh, actually I can change the settings to keep the oscilloscope view for a longer time. Oh, I can't see through the camera. I have to click like this. Okay, three seconds maybe. Go back. And there you can see, I'll hold for three seconds, whatever's on the screen. And these little pulses here are pulses from the ionizing radiation that strikes the detector. So you can see we get a significant reading from the season 137 source. I'm just going to clear the screen so it does not take into consideration the measurements it took before at normal radiation levels. And let it adjust for a little while. Now, to compare the readings, I'm gonna use an Automass 86 device. 
So I'm just going to put that here. And you can see we get readings of about 8 microsievert power from this disk. So I'm just going to put this in front of a window as well. And see what readings we get on this energy compensated gamma only device. You can see after adjusting for a while it settles about at uh, 3 microsievert per hour. But as I said, uh, cesium-137, oh, battery low, never mind. Cesium-137 is a beta and gamma emitter, and uh, the outer mass is actually supposed to be shielded so well that it only reads gamma radiation. So um, let's actually try another source. Let's try barium-133, which is a pure gamma emitter. I'll place it on here, remove the cesium, and clear again. Alright, it seems to settle at about 18 microsievert per hour. Let's try this in front of the Altimus. You can see it still only produces a reading of about 3 microsievert per hour. But there's a little issue with that as well, because barium-133 contains very low energy gamma rays as well, which will most likely be picked off by this. Uh, but the Altimus only detects gamma radiation from about 60 kV. And there are some lower energies in that as well, which this one might be detecting. So, uh, well, the dose rate reading is a little off, but it's not too bad. I'll compare it to the Gamma Scouts reading. I can even do a CPM reading on that, as we got here. I'll simply set it to counts per second, and then multiply that reading with 60. As you can see, the Gamma Scout is on gamma only, so it has a thick aluminum shield in front of the tube. So it seems to settle at about 540, 600 something CPM. I'd say around 600 CPM. And this one, again, I'm gonna reset it. Seems to settle at about 300 CPM, so the sensitivity of that is not too bad, I'd say. Now, compare it again to cesium-137 reading. I'm going to reset this as well. And get a reading from cesium-137 on the gamma scout. As you can see, I get about 180 CPM on the Gamma Scout with Gamma only. Now to reset this. So as you can see, for a Gamma only reading with the Gamma Scout versus this little semiconductor detector, it seems like it's very very close to what the Gamma Scout reads on Season 137 as well. It says this would be about 10 microsievert per hour. Calculates this roughly 180 CPM to be 10 microsievert per hour. Now I switched over the Gamma Scout to microsievert per hour as well. If we take a look at the season 137 in front again. And wait until it adjusts to a dose reading. You will see that very similar CPM, so about 180 CPM on the Pocket Geiger, as well as 180 CPM approximately for the Gamma Scout, will lead to a reading of 1.5 microsievert per hour approximately on the Gamma Scout, and about 10 microsievert per hour on the Pocket Geiger. So that's a little off. Let's compare again to the Altimus, which I've got here. Put it right in front of the tube again. And we've got slightly higher readings on the energy compensated Automess, which is probably the most reliable but also the most expensive device here. This one costs about 1,600 euros. Now this device is very cheap. The Pocket Geiger Android version, which I'm currently using, is about uh, 45 euros, which would be approximately 60 US dollars. And the software that comes with it is free. As for uh, the other version, 
for the iPhone version. I think it's a little bit more expensive, like $10 more or so. Uh, and the application is also free. There's a light version and there's also like a pro version, which actually has these logging features, so a GPS map with uh, the radiation levels that you encounter during the day, so you can just secretly log this from your pocket. And uh, that is like, I don't know, $5 or so in, in the uh, App Store from the iPhone. Um, I'm still to test this version, so I can't tell if it's if it's really good, if it's working, or if it's not working. Once I get a hold of an iPhone, I will actually test this by simulating it, walking around, and in my pocket, I will put a source next to it, away from it, and stuff to simulate uh, increased ambient radiation levels, and actually see what this is like. But first of all, I have to obtain an iPhone in order to do this, but I think this is quite promising, and as I said, they still seem to be working on the Android version to improve it as well. So um, that that would be quite a bargain. Something that is able to log your ambient radiation levels at well an acceptable uh, accuracy, um, but with GPS logging and everything for uh, approximately seventy dollars or something in total for the entire thing. That's quite a good bargain, I'd say. But um, well, I'll do more reviews about this later. Also, I have X-ray both devices. This one is the iPhone version, which you can see here. And this one is the Android version. Now there's a little difference that you'll be able to tell immediately. The iPhone version seems to contain a very thick metal sheet here, probably a thin sheet of, of lead even. Well, the Android version doesn't. It just contains a very tiny sheet, which is radiolucent on 85 kV. Well, this one for the iPhone version is not. I had to use 125 kV of uh, X-ray radiation in order to get through. You can just see the semiconductor detector beneath it here and um, they actually tell that the iPhone version is a much more sensitive version on the website so that might explain why to, to have a similar um, sensitivity it might be needed to shield the iPhone version in a much heavier way than the Android version but I'm very curious about this, I want to test this and the developers actually told me that it is possible to remove these sheets of metal that are around both of the detectors in order to even detect lower energy beta radiation so I might look into opening these and removing the metal foil but only after doing more testing with the iPhone version for example and comparing that while everything is uh, as it was supposed to be by the manufacturer so stay tuned for more updates